Okay, folks. If Recording I, in progress. If I may, let me be the first to welcome you to this first gathering of our diaspora groupings for 2022. As you know, every first Thursday, progress. every month, okay, every first, first Thursday in every month at 7 p.m., we seek to bring the diaspora in the United States together to discuss topics that are of interest to them, topics that will lead them to have a better working relationship with the government and the people of Barbados, to solicit their input into how we can better develop our country, and to really give them an opportunity in many instances just to come together for fellowship, for camaraderie, this evening's engagement, as I said, is the first for the year. And we are discussing the topic this evening. We have brought some very distinguished folks to have a discussion on the proposed establishment of people assemblies in Barbados. The proposed establishment of people assemblies in Barbados. Some, has referred, some have referred to it as a form of local government a return to local government for Barbados, and what are the advantages and disadvantages of the same. I, we are joined by two distinguished folks. I'm going to introduce them both to you. And then I'm just going to go through some, just some small, short housekeeping matters to keep this tight and keep it polite and keep it respectful. And this evening we have gathered with us, Ralph Thorne, QCMP, Ralph Thorne is the chairman of the Thorne Commission on Local Governance, which body has been established by the government of Barbados to advise on the implementation of a scheme of local government in Barbados. Mr. Thorne was admitted to the bar of Barbados in 1984 and has appeared in court and tribunals across the Caribbean. He represented the former Premier of the Turks and Caicos in the corruption case that he had from 2015 to 2016. He's also represented the government of Guyana in a number of constitutional cases in Guyana and before the CCJ. He represented the former Premier of Tortola, the BVI, in civil litigation and has appeared for clients in courts and tribunals in Grenada, Jamaica, Trinidad, and Antigua. Mr. Thorne has been a Queen's Council since 2007 and has been a member of parliament from 2018 to the present, just being recently re-elected. He was educated in Barbados at the Grace Hill Primary School, the Wesley Hall Boys, Harrison College, the University of the West Indies, the Hugh Wooding Law School in Trinidad and Coddington College in Barbados, where he completed a diploma in theology. He is married and he's the father of three children. He's a Methodist and he's played cricket for the Spartan Cricket Club in Barbados, which I did not know. He is also the chairman of the Parliamentary Committee on Governance. We are also joined by Ms. Crystal Howell. Mrs. Howell is a fellowship member of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Barbados. She's also a training facilitator for the Institute of internal auditors, a member of the Integrity Group Barbados. She's an internal auditor at Sajiko Life Inc. And she is a member of the Thorne Commission on Local Governance. Now these two folks are the ones who are going to lead the discussion. They're gonna give opening remarks at the top of this session. And then what we're gonna ask you to do is join us with either questions and or comments and or queries on the issue of this proposed system of local governance in Barbados. Now, let me just say, um, the, as you know, the Barbados Labour Party was re-elected to government on January the 19th, 2022. In the manifesto of the Barbados Labour Party, the new manifesto under the section fundamental policy frameworks, which is divided into two sections, social policy and economic policy, under the section that speaks to Caribbean and global relations policy, one section says 
that the Barbados Labour Party will actively pursue relationship building based on common values, protection of the national interest, commercial and trade diplomacy, and global advocacy. And we will, and one of the areas they said is build, strengthen, and leverage the Bajan diaspora, its contact skill sets, relationships, and love of Barbados to attract investment as well as repatriate resources and support in the building out of a Barbados's human, social, economic, environmental, and relationship capital. And under that very section of this manifesto under governance and accountability policy, it says that the government will implement the major initiatives of the Thorn Commission on Local Government given that the last major reform of our parliament was in 1971. We will establish a commission on parliamentary reform to make it more responsive to Barbados's realities today. Under that banner, therefore, government is seeking to put in another layer of governance in Barbados that gives ordinary people more of an opportunity to look after their basic affairs. And that is being led by Ralph Thorne and his commission and, um, and Mrs. Howell. And therefore, without further ado, I'm going to let them speak. But just let me say at the beginning, once they have given their opening and introductory remarks, we're going to take questions from the audience. I want you to respect the process, please. You can use the raise hand feature that is at the bottom of your screen. What I would also like you to do is also obviously we're gonna do it in order as you come in, as the questions and the comments come in, they're going to be fed to me and I'm gonna call upon you to be able to do what you do, ask your questions. But respect the chair, respect the process, believe in the process, and we will get through this in a very respectful and sensible way. But I want to really thank you all at the beginning of this year, still new year. Um, Happy new year to you all. Thank you for joining us this evening. This will not be the last of these engagements. There's another really crucial one coming up next month that we're already putting in place. So I just want you to put your heads together, put on your thinking caps, listen to what is being said, and let's look to build an even better and stronger Barbados. With those words, thank you very much. Mr. Thorne, sir, over to you. Thank you very much, Ambassador, and good evening to everyone. Uh, let me begin by acknowledging the presence of uh, Minister Humphrey and his parliamentary secretary, Mr. Corey Lane, at very short notice, uh, they have joined us. And I, I, I acknowledge them because uh, the work of the commission continues under Mr. Humphrey's and Mr. Lane's ministries. So I'm very happy that they've joined us this evening. This, this would indicate to you uh, how seriously the government is taking this project, and they call it a project, uh, the project of local government, or governance, if, if you wish. Uh, I'll just give a, and, and welcome to all the persons in the diaspora. Uh, it, it is a great pleasure to be reaching out to the diaspora. I want to assure you without uh, getting ahead of myself that we have discussed a role for the diaspora. So uh, as the discussion goes on, we could zero in on that particular proposal. But I'll just tell you quickly and briefly, uh, the, the birthplace of, of this project was uh, contained in two papers. One was written uh, by myself, and the other one was written by Ambassador Comichon, who is presently our deputy chair. Uh, of course, this was done prior to 2018, when the, the, the new government came into office. Uh, what I'm saying is that David did not know I was writing one, and uh, I did not know that he was writing one. We presented them to the party, and uh, the party accepted when it came into government. We launched in July, the Prime Minister launched uh, the, the commission in July 2019. Uh, just permit me to, to state the members of the commission. There are 11 of us in keeping with uh, the, the good Barbadian Christian tradition. Uh, I'm Chairman, uh, Ambassador Kamashang, Deputy Chair, Mr. Richard Carter. These are names that will be known to you and, and, and please be assured 
that these are names that are steeped and well experienced in Barbadian life, not only Barbadian political life, but Barbadian social and community life. Uh, there's Mr. Richard Carter. Uh, next to me is Mrs. Crystal Howell, uh, Miss Jennifer Walker, who is uh, well experienced in, in the arts and theater. There's Mr. Adrian Donovan, a well-known community activist, uh, well, well experienced in sports administration in Barbados. There's Mr. Sherwood McCaskey, who I now refer to as Mr. CBC. Sherwood is doing a series of, of programs across Barbados, and it, it really has given a new life and a new energy to the Caribbean Broadcasting Corporation. There's Ms. Cheryl Hunt, who is one of the directors of the Israel Level Foundation. Again, uh, a community group uh, involved in the arts and community work in St. Michael East. There's Mr. Peter Skeet, who does similar work in Haynesville, uh, and that is in the southern portion of St. James. There is the, without a doubt, leading environmentalist in Barbados, Mr. Barney Gibbs. And there's Mr. Mohamed Nana, who has always also been involved in community work across Barbados. Those are the 11 persons who constitute the commission. Now, as I say, this commission was uh, launched in 2019 uh, by the prime minister, and we did not waste any time. We proceeded to do what we ought to have done, that is to say, consult with the public, because this is an important body, and an important body should not find itself constituted unless the public is participating in the discussions and unless the public is participating in the structure of what we are proposing. Uh, as everyone knows, COVID came along in 2020, our lockdowns began in early 2020. By then, however, we had done some consultations in person. We did not allow COVID to stop us. We continued through COVID and we did consultations virtually, including the diaspora. I think our last consultation was dedicated to the diaspora and we did that in October, 2020. Uh, since then, we have uh, written our proposal, our report, beg your pardon, which contains the proposal for local government in Barbados. And I will just give you a very, very broad outline as to what we propose. Uh, the, the, the first proposal is that the assembly, we're calling them people's assemblies, that it should be parish based. As I've always said, uh, one of the inheritances from the British is a well-organized uh, administration and the British organized Barbados in terms of parishes. And that is a structure that we wish to maintain. Uh, if we say constituency, it connotes something that we don't wish to connote. We don't, we don't wish to politicize in, a, in, in the traditional way of B and D. So we want the, the, the people's assemblies to be parish based as opposed to constituency based. Uh, those of us over 50, <laughs> and I, Crystal is the youngest of us, Crystal is the baby of ours. Uh, those of us over 50 will know that the constituencies have changed from time to time. Uh, but the parishes, the parishes have been constant. So we want to maintain that stable administration and to, and to base the, the people's assemblies on parishes. You would appreciate that the, that the density, population densities vary among the parishes and therefore we propose to do more than 11 in keeping with the parishes. There are some parishes that will have one, St. Lucy, for example, St. Michael will have four, but we'll get into those details as we go on. Uh, this, so the first, the first uh, structure that I want you to appreciate is that the people's assemblies will be parish based. Uh, the second aspect, they will be elected and not selected. Since we propose that this is to be a third tier of government, uh, of representation, I beg your pardon, the first tier of representation, as you know, is the Senate. The Senate is appointed by the governor, by the president, I beg your pardon. Uh, the House of Assembly is elected. We are proposing that the People's Assembly should also be elected. Uh, that takes it out of the control of central government. And the third aspect that we wish you to appreciate, to appreciate and I hope that everybody appreciates this, it will be nonpartisan. As you know, when we are conducting elections in Barbados, uh, we run under the banner of a party. We propose that people's assemblies, that the persons who constitute the people's assemblies uh, will constitute those assemblies by their own virtue and by their own individual merit, that they should not uh, sit as a member of a party, they should not contest as a member of a party, 
Uh, as you know, people who live in, in villages and streets across Barbados, uh, they have to live next door to each other. And sometimes partisan politics becomes a little awkward. And if you're asking people to administer the affairs in their local communities, you don't wish to have them polarized. You don't wish to have them divided along lines of party. That is likely to retard the work. So the, the, that, is a, that is a major departure from the House of Assembly in that the People's Assemblies are persons who come with their own individual merit and individual virtue, uh, with their experience, obviously based in community work and so on. Uh, so that's, 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 that's the broad and basic structure. Um, Crystal was putting up the, the, the parishes, St. Lucy, St. John, St. Thomas one, the parishes of St. George, St. Philip, St. Peter, St. Andrew, St. Joseph and St. James, two people's assemblies each and Christ Church and St. Michael's three people's assemblies each. And uh, later on, we would have added the municipal people's assemblies based on the towns in Barbados. And we have identified eight town centers or municipalities as we call them, Bridgetown, Spikestown, Whole Town, Oyston, Six Roads, Belle Plaine, De Glebe, and Horse Hill. Uh, to come back to the philosophical basis uh, for this project or, or for this, this scheme, uh, we feel that for too long, People in communities have been dependent on central government for the delivery of services, bus service, street lights, uh, garbage collection, the, the, the matters that can be managed and effectively and efficiently managed by people who live in the communities. I want to say that, uh, Ambassador, I think you are a part of that generation too, that uh, was, uh, we were teenagers in the 70s, and I want to say even to the younger ones among us, not excluding Priscilla on my right, that the 70s in Barbados was the most vibrant uh, era in terms of a community life. I mean, you, you, left, you left and went across any part of Barbados and all the playing fields were full. Every Friday night in every community in Barbados, there were clubs meeting. Uh, you drove across Barbados a Saturday afternoon. BCL had 122 clubs playing cricket. Uh, BCA had several clubs playing cricket. Uh, the, the social life in Barbados has become devastated in that sense. Uh, I, can drive, I can drive from Bridgetown to Christchurch, Ambassador, and I can look at five, 10 playing fields, and I'm seeing no one on those playing fields. That is evidence of the decline of social interaction in Barbados. Uh, technology has also affected uh, social and community life. Uh, I was speaking to several old band members, and they reminded me that in the 70s and 60s, uh, just about every community had, had, had a band. Of course, the computer has affected that, and now people play alone. Uh, so that every aspect of community life has evidence a decline. I don't associate that with anybody at the top. What I associate that with is a change in values. Uh, I associate that with technological changes. Uh, but what we need in Barbados, we need to have people return to community interaction. That is what we need. And I think this project is justified, if only for that reason. Uh, we are not asking people to return to the 70s and the 80s and the 60s, but what for the sake of Barbados' survival, we need to, to, to broaden government down to the community levels. And, and, and that is why we are here. That is why the proposal has been made. I, I think I've said enough. Uh, ambassador, and I will ask uh, our youngest member to, to add to what I've said. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was a mouthful, <laughs> and it really sums up um, what we have been doing here. I wanted to share with you some of the work that we would have done so far. So we would have been meeting with different community areas. And this would be based on parish. So we started off in St. Michael and then we went all across Barbados and we would have utilized some of these schools that we would have had and community centers. And then COVID unfortunately came around. So then we had to use technology and social media to complete the last three parishes that we would have had on our list. Coming out of this, we would have been requested to have an additional meeting at the, which was done with Queens Park. And 
there was a lot of robust discussion and input. The initial proposal that we had, there were a lot of persons who would have shared and given their input. We would have had positive and some critique that we ne needed to make sure that we included because the reality is the initial proposal would have been their brainchild, mm -hmm. but it was important to have as many voices as possible give their input as to for something that is for them. It doesn't make any sense going to the people and forcing something down their throat that they did not have any say in. And what we were hoping for is that we had some members who were in the diaspora who would have come on our social media channels and would have given some input. However, I am very happy to see a much more formal discussion with the diaspora so that we can get even more interaction with you. And one of the key things that came out was from the discussions we've had, there was a back and forth where persons felt uncomfortable that per the Barbadians who do not live here will be having a say or being elected to be able to dictate matters for parishes and communities that they are no longer involved in. At the same time, we still know that the persons in the diaspora do have Barbados at heart, do have its best interests at heart, and have a lot to offer, a lot of value. They would have knowledge from the countries that they're living in that they can share from, with us. Some of the suggestions that even came out, especially with the Queen's Park one, where the, there was a suggestion about how we deal with persons who would have been from the prison system and how it was dealt with overseas and using this as an opportunity to give persons a second chance because their community believes in them, their community votes for them as a person to represent them as a leader and they can have an opportunity to be able to show their community that they want to give back and be able to do more to make up for whatever their transgressions would have happened. And the actual way that it was being done, the suggestions that came out were things that we had not considered initially in our proposals. And every assembly that we've had, we've experienced that. Something we keep thinking, okay, we're done. We've included all the ideas we could possibly come up with. And then somebody brings something that is dynamic and we really need to include it. And we, we, we appreciate everything that persons have done to contribute. I know that there are also some younger persons on this particular stream right now. And I'm very grateful to see all of you coming on. Please know even though this is a meeting for those in the diaspora, it, the ambassador has been gracious enough to welcome you as well to share your voice share your opinions and to have this discussion going so i will try not to add too much talking to the conversation because it really is for us to hear from you guys and to get your input how you feel about what we've been proposing so far if you like me my main reason for taking part in this and advocating for it is that too long a lot of Barbadians have had to know somebody, know a minister or know some, someone to get very basic things done that we should be able to say, okay, if there's a budget set aside for this, for the people's assemblies, we live here, we know which roads we want to have, we know who, where we want to have vending done, we know all of these things. We should be able to organize these things ourselves and have it facilitated as opposed to having to go through and get a favor and it being used as a reason to elect some person when really and truly these are things that we can do for ourselves. We've grown and evolved as a country and we want to put more substance behind the title of Republic as opposed to saying that we are still dependent on anyone else and let the work of the ministry be strictly left to those who have been elected to serve in those functions. So I am very grateful to MP Thorne for including me in this, for Ambassador Commission for having taken me in presenting on his behalf. I know that's probably who most persons were expecting, but I hope that when we have this conversation today that you do not miss him too much. <laughs> and Noel, I, I don't know, uh, just let me add that, um, you mentioned the, the new republic. And uh, as you know, we obviously will be 
implementing or creating, establishing a new Republican constitution. Now, we are all aware that the Senate and the House of Assembly are established within the constitution. And one of the proposals that we've made to the government is that the People's Assembly should be equally entrenched yeah. within the constitution. Uh, it, it, it is possible to do this by way of an, a mere act of parliament. And if you do it by an act of parliament, another government can come along and simply repeal that act of parliament and come with a new scheme. So our proposal, our very serious proposal to the government is that this should be equally entrenched within the constitution as that third tier of, of representation. So I, 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 thought, I thought it important to say that. And the, another suggestion that we had gotten from the consultations that we did is that three seats will be reserved for persons that across the assembly have been determined would be suitable for sitting in the Senate. And it came from a very young person. Yeah, as well. it, it was a very young person that made that suggestion. So it gives the feel that the people of Barbados got a say as to who should be sitting in the Senate to represent them. The persons who would have given the most value across the different people's assemblies. And it gives a different face to when persons see them sitting in the Senate to know we directly had an impact or a say in them representing our interests. Ambassador, I know that um, there may be the cynical view that how, how, can you, how can you keep something like this non-partisan? And we are not, I always say we are not so naive as to believe that the parties are not going to exploit it. I mean, you'd have a person who lives in a community who has uh, ambition for, the, for higher service, that is to say within the House of Assembly. We see nothing wrong with him uh, trying his hand at a people's assembly. Uh, and we expect that the parties will place people to uh, give them experience, nothing wrong with that. Uh, but it is the, the integrity of the body will be dependent on the persons who constitute that body and the persons who elect those persons who, who constitute the body. So, so it will, uh, Ambassador, it is not going to be a perfect system as is the higher system of the people of House of Assembly. It's not a perfect system, nothing is perfect. But what we are doing here, we are creating an ideal for community management, for the management and the administration of affairs within the community. Uh, it took, you know, I go to the United States sometimes and I'm driving around or being driven around. And I ask the person driving me, but why is this place so clean? I mean, you're driving down highways, miles and miles from, 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 the, from the residences and it is clean. And I ask, but who does this? And they tell me, uh, local governments do that. And you know, it took the explosion of a volcano in St. Vincent, to remind us that we have human resources within all of our communities. And what started out as a program to, to clean up dust has now uh, transfigured itself into a beautification uh, exercise where we have the government is employing young people, not only to clean the communities, but to beautify them. And I really hope that that continues. And I can see that again as a form of local government at work where people who live in the communities are employed within those communities to keep those communities clean. Uh, Mr. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you, uh, Mr. Thorne and Mrs. Howell, for your- Noel, can, can, we, can we make it casual? I'm Ralph and Crystal, Crystal. is next to me. <laughs> oh, no problem. Let's relax, let's relax. We we'll call you ambassador though. He get, no, I ain't gonna call my mother in Christian me ambassador neither. So <laughs> so you know call me that either. But I just trying to get to the issue of, of these you, you know, you all have said a mouthful this evening. I'm mm -hmm. gonna open the floor and I'm gonna give the participants here um, the opportunity to voice their opinions, to ask their questions. I see already one hand is up. But I wanted, I, I just want before they start to get a, a couple uh, some clarifications on, on, on the direction. First and foremost, just, just bear with me just a couple of minutes. Um, tell me something though, the, the, the actual rules and regulations and standards for accountability for these people's assemblies or this local government have not yet been put in place. This is no, just, no, this no. Is just oh. a shell. The Ambassador, all that we've done, we have, we have just done a report which we presented to cabinet and David and I did an oral presentation last year uh, the cabinet has accepted in principle 
And I can say to you that based on a conversation with the prime minister, she seems very excited about it and she would like it implemented this year. I hope I'm not bringing her secrets into the public domain, but she I'm, wants I'm not, it done. I'm not going out of my lane on, on the issues of, of uh, whether or not this sounds desirable. I, I think the whole concept of, of municipal authorities to municipalities to run things that are close to people, I think has always been, even in our system, even though we, we got rid of it, has always been, has always been accepted. My thing is that, that the number of things that still are in my head, um, the issues of things like nominations, I mean, how, how, mm -hmm. do you, how do you determine who will be nominated to be voted for in the first place? The second thing that I, I really want to know is that um, the issues of, as you said, partisan politics is going to come into it. But I also, is there going to be a budget, for example, for every municipality, for every for everyone? In other words, are we dependent on central government again for the resources that make this thing happen? Let me answer the second one quickly. Crystal will deal with the first one. Mm -hmm. uh, as I said, we are not, we are, we, we, our proposal is that this should not be under the control of a minister or a ministry. And we have therefore proposed that the central administration of people's assembly will be the clerk of parliament, the, 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 the person who administers parliament, the CEO of parliament, so to speak, is the clerk of parliament. And in terms of budgeting, that will come through. Our proposal is that it must come through parliament in the same way that the Senate and the House of Assembly are funded by, by central government through a, a fund that goes through uh, the clerk of parliament. We wish to have this done in the same way. And uh, I want to say to you, Noel, as well, that um, we had, we had fairly robust discussions as to whether people should be paid, uh, assembly men and women should be paid. Oh, we had robust yeah, discussion was, yeah. on that. that was and a hot one. I think we settled on the end that if you're paying your parliamentarians or you're paying your senators, you can't ask a man or a lady to come to all these meetings and administer his community and do it voluntarily. He will have, he will have expenses getting there and, and the time lost from other activities. So we have proposed, we call it a service okay. allowance. Yeah. Ralph, I, 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 uh, I, I listen, Ralph. I, don't forget something. your first question. That, uh, no, 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 they got, a lot, they, got, listen, they got a lot of other things in my mind I want to ask. But, I, but let me say that this is not my show. I, I, um, I guess I can get an opportunity to ask you or the folks put my question. So I want to open the floor. Folks, I told you, use the raise the hand feature. Give your input, your question, whatever. I got so many other things I would like to ask because there's so many things in this. But let me start with Peter Boyce. Mr. Boyce. The floor is yours. Good evening, folks. Uh, Commissioner and your whole group, thank you so much for what you've done. It's a wonderful concept, Manide. Would, would we be out of place to be asking where you're speaking to us from? I'm in Washington, D.C. I'm, I'm a mile welcome. down the road from your ambassador. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Uh, I'm from Barbados. I used to work at the Nation newspaper a long time ago. I see Tony Best is somewhere there. Hoyas is a name I, I'm familiar with. But I'm interested in here. Is this group just going to be a, a one to make recommendations to the government, but yet still uh, you're talking about maybe having one or two members that sit in the Senate? Are you going to be an advisory group like what we have here in Washington, D.C.? We have a neighborhood advisory commission. No, or are you going no, to be like no, the town? No. Or are you going to be like the town of Tacoma Park or the town of Portland, Oregon? Perhaps the perhaps I, I'm not sure how they're structured, but perhaps the latter. We are having we are having local assemblies. We are having like city councils or, or, or community councils. That's that's a term with which you may be more familiar. We are asking, we are proposing that you have a system of government in which the people who live in the particular area. Uh, manage the affairs within that area. As a, uh, at present, all of the local affairs are managed by a minister. And Noel will tell you that that is extremely difficult. Yeah, so it, it, it really comes down to the management or the administration of local affairs. I'll give you some examples, Peter. The bus service, road repairs. We get people, Noel will tell you that we get people calling us asking about a street light. They want a street light and they call the parliamentary representatives. People who want gas running into their street and uh, natural gas. Uh, matters like that, infrastructural matters that uh, pertain to the communities. These things can be managed by people who live in the communities 
in something called a people's assembly. Perhaps they'll meet in a church hall. Perhaps they'll meet in a school hall. Uh, perhaps they'll meet in community centers. That is our proposal. It is government at the local level uh, constituted by persons who live in that community. So I'm sorry, just a follow up question. So the local people will be actually be getting that street light fix or that person still has to go to a minister to get that yes, street light they, fixed? They, our proposal is that they will requisition central government. In other words, they will requisition the Ministry of Transport, Transport and Work. So in other words, then uh, you should think an advisory group would maybe would be better rather than managers, so to speak. I'm sorry. Except, except Peter, except Peter, that uh, I referred, I referred to the crisis of non-involvement uh, in Barbados. I, earlier, I, I said to you that our communities are vacant, our playing fields are vacant, our our community spaces are vacant, and we think the time has come for people to reactivate themselves and to reactivate interest in their communities and their community life. And this is an opportunity for people to get together. And, and decide what is best for our community. Thank you for your comments and your response. Thank you. Most welcome, Peter. Thanks, Peter. Uh, Mr. Clark, Sam Clark, the floor is yours, please. Go ahead. Hi, good evening. Good evening, panel. Um, Ralph and- uh, Hi, hi Sam, how are you? I'm ambassador. I'm good, I'm great. I'm, I'm coming from Brooklyn. Um, I'm you. glad that we have something like this, a people assembly. Uh, it goes around like what we have here in New York, a community uh, uh, boards with advises on- the, Sam, what did you call it? A community, community board. board. We have a community board here. Thank and you. then where we advocate for the change, the, 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 the land use committee, transportation committee, and social committees, those kind of stuff that you're talking about from where I, I think this concept has come from and is badly needed because I don't think that, it's hot, that a minister or a representative can answer this stuff and get these things done. Mm -hmm. my, 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 my question is, is that if it is um, the town commission report, as I went, went through it, would it be, uh, you said it would be laid, is it going to be definitely laid in parliament and where it becomes some kind of uh, like enshrined with our constitutional in, in a new republic? Because I'm, I'm worried about we doing all of this commission that we have had numerous commissions um, before and it just go there and, and, can't, and gather dust, as opposed to it being part of the new republic as we are we're working with our new constitution, that this could be all encompassing within that constitution, right? The diaspora voice is strong. And also, as you said, that you have a, a, a carve out in there for the, uh, some impact for us and the diaspora, which I'm greatly appreciative of. And as you know, I am a strong proponent of the diaspora being part of Barbados, yes. having the same Barbados entitled to right to, to the voting rights, the equal rights to have an opportunity to vote in, uh, in our elections because we are a significant part of our community and economic value to Barbados that we bring. So I'm seeing this as a vehicle that we can all encompass in the constitution and also give us a car uh, opportunity for our diaspora rights. Um, I think that this is, we are on to something good here. And I've been grateful to you, um, Ms. 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 Crystal and Commissioner Torn, and for the work that you've done in it. I have been part of this. I have, I think, yes, I did uh, um, listen to a couple of your meetings and I did contribute to one of your virtual meetings that you had after the COVID um, yeah. came in. And I think that this is something that we should really work hand in hand in. With, and I hope, and I hope, and I will always, as, as, the, as the ambassador know, I am a strong proponent of diaspora having some say in them based upon our contributions and our economic value and et cetera, et cetera. And it all goes on and on. So I am thanking you that we can have more form like this. And I would like to bring you all up here at some point in time to, to really speak to the, it is the diaspora here in New York, in my neck of the woods, as to what this all encompasses, because I think enough is not being done to let the Barbados and diaspora know about this torn commission, you know. And I think it, this is the thing that we we, we you started, Mr. Ambassador, on a good on a good track. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sam. Listening to you, Sam, the word that 
uh, jumps at me is agitation. We need to agitate. Uh, as you correctly say, too many commissions have gone by and they've caught dust. I want to give you the assurance, Sam, that we seem to have caught government's attention. Uh, the Prime Minister has made several speeches and I've listened to them. And in most of those speeches, she has referred to the, to the work that we've done. Uh, she has now placed uh, the, the, the commission, uh, the work that we have done, the report that we've presented, she has placed that under ministry. That is why Minister Humphrey and Parsec uh, Lane is with us tonight. It is The, the work is uh, continuing under their ministry. In fact, Kirk doesn't mind me saying to you that we are due to meet uh, he is due to meet with the commission within the next week or week and a half. Uh, his predecessor, Ms. Cynthia Ford, member for St. Thomas, she was equally active in the work that we have we had done. Uh, Sam, we are not going to remain quiet. I can promise you that until this becomes a part of the administration in Barbados. All 11 of us, our work finished formally last year. And all 11 of us have remained active in ensuring that this scheme of local government becomes a reality, if not this year, very, very soon thereafter. And I thank want to you thank you, much. Sam, for participating. I remember you participated in that meeting at the Queen's Park, which we did virtually. We had you, we had, uh, I think, somebody from Montreal, as far away as Montreal, a French province. And... Uh, we, 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 we are inspired, Sam, by the interest shown within the diaspora. Uh, if you would permit me to read, and this isn't going to be long, I will read uh, paragraph 14.4 of our report to the government. It says, the commission also feels strongly that assemblies should be empowered and encouraged to co-op first, second, and third generation Barbadians resident in the various regions of the Barbadian diaspora to serve on subcommittees. And we also recommend that the assemblies utilize the available information, communications technology to facilitate such engagement with members of the diaspora. Uh, the people in Barbados must get used to the fact that our population is more than 300,000. We have people in London, we have people in Toronto, we have people in New York, in Florida. Uh, I, I, I welcome Mr. Hoyas. We have people across the globe who are Barbadians not only um, legally, but they're Barbadians culturally and they're Barbadians. And we want to embrace all Barbadians in the business of Barbados. And Sam, please continue to agitate. Please continue to agitate for the interests of the diaspora. This country will not develop unless with the assistance and with the participation of persons who live in the diaspora. And that's why we took our deliberations into the diaspora. We have included the interests of the diaspora within our report. And we recognize that we must go forward with the diaspora fully on board with us. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, th thank you, Ralph. Um, Ms. Holder, Maureen Holder, you have the floor. She has to unmute. Where did she go? Got it, got it, got it. Okay. Hi, thanks, Ambassador. Hi, good evening to Mr. Thorne and Ms. Howell, and thanks once again, Ambassador Lynch. Now, from what I'm hearing, I think it's a good idea, but I will wait to get more detailed information about the clear problems and questions that the assemblies are seeking to resolve across communities in Barbados. I heard uh, Mr. Thorne indicated that the uh, document that they produce is before the prime minister. So I will wait to hear more details on that. But I take it that these assemblies will facilitate more national conversations about the things impacting Barbadians at the level of the, the community. That's, that's what I'm hearing coming through. I, I could be wrong, but that's what I'm hearing coming through. So what I hope would happen coming out of these assemblies is a willingness, because we, we like to talk, to prioritize the broad and common interests of the majority of Barbadians and then have them implemented. Now, having said that, I want to know if the approach is going to be integrated and integrated co collective approach which I believe will call for some comparative analysis across the parishes to see what the common interests are running through each parish so that you could 
allocate scarce resources in the best possible way? Is there room for citizens to make proposals that will be considered? I thank you. That is something that Ms. actually Ola. came up at some of our assemblies because they were talking about competing interests. So let's say, for instance, you had a, a circumstance where a number of the assemblies wanted the same thing. Who would get priority? Who would be mm -hmm. chosen? How would it be determined? So a needs analysis would be done to see which area might be of in the most need. And the other things that have been brought up, especially in terms of financing, some, some parishes that we visited are already looking at ways that in addition to whatever allocation budget they have, they would also be looking to fund a lot of the projects that they come up with themselves. I'm guessing out of some faith that they would be able to move things along much faster if they look for self-funding. But it also brought up the issue of how the budgets would be allocated. And initially, because it's the first time you're going to be doing it, it would be an equal distribution. But there were some concerns that there are some parishes, for example, St. Lucy brought it up, for example, where their needs may be more what we would consider basic or fundamental and they may require more funding for things that other parishes take for granted. For instance, water, um, portability, having sufficient street lamps, whereas a parish like St. James, these things are already covered and the budget that they have may be going to things that are considered added benefits. So those are the kind of discussions as we move past the initial phase of the assemblies when they come to fruition that we're going to have to work out how are we going to be allocating budgets to make sure that those who need the most critical things have the funds to be able to facilitate these, that the parishes that have alternate means to be able to fund things don't feel as though they're being disadvantaged because they can advocate for themselves and they're not being supported as well as others. But we are hoping that as time goes along, we be able to make sure that we have what is an equitable solution for everyone. And we can make sure everyone feels good that their concerns are fairly heard. With regards to one of the first questions that was answered that may help Maureen as well. Persons within the parish are going to be elected. So they're going to be using a community profile to be able to advocate for why they should be elected by the persons in their parish. And we wanted to make sure that persons understood that it's very different to, for instance, the CD, because it's not necessarily going to be based on whether some person is the most intellectually mm -hmm. suitable person. We want persons who have a proven record that they have been giving to their communities, that they have been able to get things done. And that does not always necessarily mean some person who is going out there in, and active in community projects. For example, even with myself, I am, with my memberships in ICAB and the IAA, I have been giving back in terms of financial literacy. So we want to have persons to understand that no one group will benefit over another. If you have been given of your intellectual capacity, that's great if you've been giving of your physical service. All of these things are tools that you should be adding in your community profile to help advocate for why your community should elect you to represent them and their interests. And as we've been emphasizing, you get what you vote for. If you want someone who is going to advocate for your community, put the best interests at heart, listen to the people in that community because the reality is they're not being elected to just push their agenda. The point is that they understand what the community needs and will fairly represent their interests. So we are advocating and continue to advocate so that we can make this as nonpartisan as possible, that persons need to elect those that will best represent their interests, that will best represent the community and will advocate for the things that the community needs. Okay. Thank you very much, Crystal. Ms. Joel Jones, your hand is up. Go right there. Yes. Um, good night, everyone. 
Hello, Hi. good night, Joel. I am talking to you from Montreal. Welcome. Oh, thank you very much. And um, even though I'm living in, in Canada for a fair amount of years, I still keep abreast of what's going on in Barbados. And I'm sure that these meetings now will even help me to learn a lot more about what's going on there. So um, I'm, I'm grateful for these meetings that will be held. And I will try to join you as much as possible to listen to what's going on. But I have a few um, concerns. And one of them, um, the last time I was in Barbados was 2015. And what I need to see when I go downtown are the vendors that, that sell the different um, produce and whatnot. And sometimes they sell stuff with things in a bottle. And some of these things don't have any labels on them. And I would like to see them labeled. So that um, not just me, because I, I might know when they tell me what's in it, I might know what's in it, but the average tourist may not know what's in it. And they're accustomed to picking up something and reading labels, ingredients, and whatnot. That's something I would like to see done. Mm -hmm. Another thing I'm concerned about is childhood diabetes, children diabetes. I find that um, there are too much children in Barbados with diabetes that I'm concerned about. And I notice that they're taking every effort to take all the junk food and sugars out of the schools. I'm impressed with that. And that is from watching Good Morning Barbados. I found that out. Um, so I'm quite happy about that. Um, I'm also happy that um, the people of Barbados are very much involved of what's going on around them in terms of uh, their own community. This is very good because at least um, when someone is chosen to represent that community, whether it be someone in the Senate or just like you said, a local person that says, look, you know, I love my community. I'm used to doing community work and I want to see this, this, this done in my community. That is, that is great, I love that. And I'm also impressed of the beauty of Barbados. Now, like I said, I haven't been there since 2015, but I see a lot of stuff on videos and um, I notice especially Queens Park. Mm -hmm. I think if I saw Queens Park, I wouldn't even recognize Queens Park because I used to walk to Queen's Park as a girl going to school. I went to the Corporate High School and walking to Queen's Park, you know, I would walk through there. And now to see it, it's so beautiful. You know, I like that, that big uh, fountain that they have. When you look at the bottom of it, you see the map of Barbados. I think that's, that's really pretty. And all the, um, the, the different cleanups, that you have done around the city. It's very, very pretty, I'm impressed. So I just have to see it for myself in person and not just see it on videos. Um, I have won't you, have you seen any videos of Freedom Park as yet? No, nothing like that. I haven't been to, I have to, a lot of places. I have to go like Queen's Park and Hero Square and mm -hmm. that wall that you have with lots yes. of names on it. So I have to visit that wall. And, you know, so there are many places that I really, really would like to see. So usually when I come there, um, I'm given a tour by the former High Commissioner to Canada, um, Victor Johnson. He usually gives me a Barbados tour. So I'm going to hold him to that when I come there so I can travel and see all the different changes and whatnot. The sewage system, of course, I like the fact that it was cleaned up. And the people in the countryside are getting water. You know, it, it is, it's really, I'm really impressed with all the work that the prime minister is doing and her helpers. And like she said, um, and I quote, 
um, many hands make light work. So if she, if you guys get together and form different groups and community groups and whatnot, and you know every parish have a community group, of course you're gonna get things done because it is not like one politician running all over the place and trying to get everything done and, and then he's criticized for not doing this and that and the other. So it's good what you guys are doing to um, create groups that yeah. would help you, yeah. you know, that would help you in each parish and let you, then they could tell their representatives, like they'll probably pick one person from the group to present to their representative what's really needed in that community. So I think that would work so smooth. Hopefully it would work. <laughs> And, and you, you, you need to join a, a, a WhatsApp chat group, Miss Jones. <laughs> yes. So that these yes. videos, so that these videos would be sent to you almost every morning. Oh, great, great, great. Yeah, I yeah, would you like need, to know. You need to join yes. a chat group with some people here yes. in Barbados. Oh, great. Because right now I um I have um the mighty Gabby. Yes. He sends me his poems every morning. Yes. I think he should be sending you he, videos. He is, he is on a cricket yes. chat group writing his poetry the whole day and he needs yes. to send you some yes. videos of Freedom Park. Yeah. Yes. And he writes he writes a poem like in a matter of minutes. It's in a matter incredible. of minutes, yes. You know, and it yes. is so funny because usually I would ask him a question and he would answer with a poem. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> he is so creative. And within that poem. I get all my answers. Well, as, as we said earlier, Joel, uh, mm -hmm. the, 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 the cleanup that you're seeing, and not only the cleanup, but the beautification that you're seeing across oh, yes. Barbados, oh, yes. a lot of that is being done by people who live in the communities, and that makes Great. a big difference. Excellent. Exactly. That, that Because when you are able to help your own community, Precisely. rather than sitting and complaining and criticizing and everything. You May know, I ask how long you've been away from us? Um, 51 years. Oh, wow, that's a long time. Please come back soon. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't tell you what year, because then you're going to start calculating. <laughs> and we're not going to get into all that, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's a long because time ago. I stopped, I stopped pumping when I reached 21, so that's it. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I'm really, really happy for these meetings. And I really hope that we will have lots more like these. And I want to say a special hello to Corey Lane, if he's still there. And um, we have this little thing with Corey Lane where I call him Edible Cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> and that is because of when he had his daughter, his first baby. She was so cute. And she had the puffiest little cheeks. I just could eat them. So from then on, I used to call him Edible Cheeks. So I know I don't know who it is speaking now. <laughs> <laughs> it's Jewel. You just look and see. <laughs> uh, well, I, 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 all the eating and all the edible things we go. <laughs> thank you very much, Miss Jones. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, thank you very much for your contribution. Okay. <laughs> uh, Mr. Walters, Randolph Walters, your hand is being up for a little while. Go ahead, please. Thank you, uh, Mr. Ambassador MP. Thorne and Christian, I am talking to you from uh, Pennsylvania. Oh, and uh, thank you, Sam. It's good to see you and hear you earlier. Uh, Sam invited me. Um, so I'm kind of coming in late. Uh, I certainly would like to know how I can get access to the Thorne Commission and the other stuff to read and get caught up. But I, I want to say how proud I am of uh, as a Barbadian of uh, what I'm hearing. It certainly is a mark of what a republic is and should be, uh, mm -hmm. a level of local participation, local government, yeah. uh, decentralizing some stuff. So there's a lot of stuff that I'm hearing that I really like and appreciate. And even in the absence of reading the details, what I've heard from uh, MP Tarn tonight, and I remember you from Cave Hill. I remember we were at university together. You probably don't know me. I remember, but uh, this is good, and I hope I can uh, be able to get information to to continue to be part of this. I certainly there are a number of questions I have, but uh, I don't feel 
Uh, okay, just, give us, just give us one or two, uh, Randall. Don't be shy. Well, well, one of the things I was thinking about with respect to the needs of local communities mm -hmm. is funding. Whether this would mean that government budgets need to be larger, because when in in the way that we function now, uh, you know, oftentimes, as you know, uh, Ralph, that. There are members in local communities who are waiting on street lights to be changed, all kinds of stuff. And that can take a long time. I mean, there are people over the years that have complained that they don't see their representative until election time and stuff get done. So if we have local gov uh, participation at the local level, yeah. uh, it means that more requests are going to be coming in, more problems are going to be solved. And I would imagine that government budgets would need to be larger. And so I, I, I wanted to ask about that. And also the extent to which there could be ways to find funding at the local level so that everything does not have to come from the government in terms of funding. Uh, but I, I do want to say, uh, I don't want to take too much time that I really appreciate this time. Thank you, Sam, for... Uh, sending me the link and I want to be part of this. I'm a proud Barbadian and uh, uh, a lot of my money comes to Barbados every month uh, to support some families there and, and so on. And I really want to affirm uh, what Sam has always advocated about those of us in the diaspora who can be part of government and can be able to vote. That's something I would certainly love to see. And so I just want to say this has my support. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. And I really love what I'm hearing. This sounds like the growth of a republic. Thank so you. thanks for the opportunity. Thank you very much, Randolph. And as to the question of budgets and costs, uh, admittedly, the, the emphasis will be on efficiencies. Because if you can have a more efficient management of, this, of, of, of uh, resources and systems, uh, the costs may increase, yes. I, in fact, I suspect government costs increase every year like any other business. But what we are focusing on is efficiencies uh, or our efficiencies. Yeah, because a lot, of, a lot of money is wasted in systems that are inefficient and the participation of the local population makes it more efficient. Right, thank you, Ralph. Uh, I see Mr. Woosley Granham decided to stand up for a while. He wasn't, didn't do it in the chat, but I've been noticing the, the video. Mr. Granham, go ahead with your question or comment, please. Well, good night to everyone. Good night, Wesley. Good night. Um, Sam Clark, that's my hometown boy, two-fifths village person. 1991, so Wesley, we met in New York. Yes, 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 that's true. And one of the things I must say though, Ralph, is that mm. it seems as though you're the only one in the House of Assembly that can capture my attention. <laughs> because I love to listen to you whenever you get up in the House of Assembly and speak. I am glued to the radio because there is so much that you say that it that makes sense and it is and it flows. You Wesley, know, you're so, being sentimental about 1991 when we brought the group to New York. Well, to a certain extent. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. But but what I want to say tonight is that most of us growing up in Barbados would be familiar with the mayor of Bridgetown. When we, I guess I was a little boy going to Good Shepherd School at mm -hmm. the time. Mm -hmm. And under that jurisdiction, we had local government. And you know, we had the Southern District Council, the Northern District yeah. Council and all the various councils. And these were the ones who looked after the, the street lights and all that kind of stuff. I recognize that since, local, since central government has taken over, it, ha it has been difficult over the years to get things done in constituencies. Yes. And for one reason or the other, it is either that you can get it done because you're a member of a political party or you couldn't get it done because you were not. Mm -hmm. Now, the whole concept of the People Assembly is, in my mind, a good thing. And if we were to look at community involvement in the United States of America, I've been living in this country now, I'm calling from Georgia. And Ralph, I'm not in New York anymore. I left New York. Oh, I see. Welcome, welcome. My favorite so team. I am living here in Grayson, Georgia. Oh. And I have been in the United States now for quite some time since, you know, since 1978. But the point that I'm trying to make is simply this. 
it is a good thing <coughs> if we can get it work right. Now, I believe that the whole concept of this should be that it gives everybody in the in the in the the community a chance to be participants in whatever is happening as sure. it relates to their interests within the particular constituency. Well said. Yeah. Right. And when it comes to the whole question of voting, there's no there's no greater democracy than the people's democracy. Correct. And here in the United States, everything that is done in the United States is voted for. Mm -hmm. School boards, you have to be voted for on the school board. Every single thing that comes Judges. up, the people are supposed to be uh, the architects of all of this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So my question to you tonight is, we have the constituency councils. What's going to happen to them? I think you can't have a constituency council. This is my opinion. It wouldn't be wise to have a constituency council and a, a people's assembly council too. So no. is there... Wesley, they're, they're not functioning any longer. <clears throat> okay, okay, that's it. Uh, the People's Assembly will hopefully replace that, that system. And, Fair and we, don't, we don't propose to come and to criticize that system that's in the past. Uh, we, we're going forward. Right. And yeah. one of the things I would like to see happen, that when we get these assemblies together, mm -hmm. that a bill, someone in the, in, 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 in the assembly should be able to write a bill and have it debated in parliament. Yeah. These are the kind of things that we need to have, yeah. you know what I mean? Have it debated in parliament. Here in the United States, you get a bill, and if it is the Ronald Johnson bill, it is de yeah. debated in Congress and it becomes law. However, so if you're gonna talk about total participation, you have to include everybody. Yeah. You know, the question is, I know how we in Barbados, or, or rather Barbados are, we are aligned to one political party or another. Mm -hmm. Now I think yeah. what, the, what the assembly has got to do, it has to, change the way we think under the assembly about political parties and this and the bees and the bees and whatever. Yeah. Because I would love to see a, a time come in Barbados where here in the United States to talk about reaching across the aisle. And I think the time has come in Barbados when the government, we don't have an opposition now, but in the future, the government can reach across the aisle to the opposition and vice versa so that we can come together on issues mm -hmm. instead of having issues in Barbados and you are 5 million miles away and I'm 5 million miles apart and mm -hmm. we can't come together. Yes. So I believe that we have to have bipartisan agreement when it comes to the future of our country yes. and how yes. decisions are made. Yes. Now, I, I'd like to touch a little bit on the diaspora because um, um, my, my friend Sam is on, we have a, 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 a Facebook page down here called the Barbados Diaspora Advocacy Action Network, right? It's on Facebook. And we go in there and we post certain posts and everything. The diaspora is important to Barbados, but the problem about the diaspora is simply as it there's no relationship between the diaspora and government. Let's put it this way. Now I lived in New York City for quite some time and we had access to a council general there. In, in, in Florida, they have a council general there. And in Georgia, we had uh, an honorary council. I don't know if it, if it functions or what happens, but, but in order for the government to get the people in the diaspora to do great things for Barbados, it has to first get its act together when it comes to representation or having people that you can call and pick up the phone and speak to and have everything done. So they're only, they're, people in Washington have an, an embassy. M um, Miami has one and New York. When I lived in New York, we could, we could go to the embassy and get things done. But when you have an honorary council down here, I think that they should, they should be more honorary councils and they should be able to do the task that and uh, uh, an honorary council is supposed to do. Was me ask, what is your population in Georgia, your Barbadian population, including well, it is, perhaps it, second generation? Well, it's I, I haven't done the statistics on it, but there are quite a number of, of Barbadians here in Georgia. As a matter of fact, they're leaving New York every day and they're coming really? down here, you know, because here, because Georgia is a place where 
for entrepreneurs and all those kind of things, those kind of things. People, you know, come they come to Georgia because it's a place where black. I know people, you had an association. That association is still existing in Georgia. Which one? John Wiltshire was. Which one? Uh, I, I remember the name John Wiltshire, uh, who left here around the eighties, and he was in the association in Georgia. Oh, um. The the, Barbadian the, association the, in, there was in, a Barbadian uh, association in Georgia, but as a matter of fact, it doesn't function anymore. Doesn't. It doesn't function anymore. And it would be a good thing if we can bring it back or yeah. bring about something not necessarily the same as an organization, but something similar because we live in a different age now. COVID has changed the, the way how things mm -hmm. are done. Mm -hmm. So we have to move according to the times. But what I'm saying is that, for instance, in the diaspora, if we wanted to buy some bonds from the government, we mm -hmm. don't even know, we never don't even know anything about them until all of them are gone. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is mm -hmm. this lack of information that is disseminated between yeah. the diaspora and government and government agencies. So what I'm saying is that since we are so, since we in the diaspora are meaning so much to the government, mm -hmm. I think that we can play a greater role. I am not one of those people who would say that I will vote in Barbados for a political party because I don't think that I will ever vote in Barbados except if I move back there and I'm registered. But I live in the United States, so I vote here. Mm -hmm. Other people may differ on that particular point. Other Barbadians want to come and vote, but for me, I don't think that I should, should vote in Barbados if I don't live there, right? That's my opinion. So we will be willing to support this initiative mm -hmm. because I can see that is another layer of democracy at play, mm -hmm. you know? And as I said before, if we can get the participation of more people moving up the ladder, you know, because you would find that here in the United States, you move from constituents, from the councils and all the way up board and you run for yeah. higher office, yeah. right? And everybody should be given a chance to run for higher office. Correct. Right, and I'm particularly concerned because when, there are a lot of Barbadians in Barbados who got more ideas than politicians, but they never get a chance to express them. So therefore that's why I'm saying that I would love to see the day come when a bill, when you can write a bill in the constituency level and send it to parliament and let parliament debate it and pass it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's something that we can look forward to. Yeah. So that is my comment, you know I me, mean? but I would like to see the day, I would like to see that the, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs does something about the diaspora and bring it together as a cohesive force, you know, um, uh, as Barbadians, because we can do great things and we have done great things. I know that in, in New York, New York is the, the bedrock of, of Barbadians and mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, we used to, I used to run Urban, I used to run the Council of Barbadian organizations, all of that kind of stuff I used to be doing up there. Yeah. So I'm quite familiar with it. And you have to take people who are familiar with the diaspora so that and appoint them so that they can tend to try and translate certain things to the government because they know it, they live in it every day. Mm -hmm. So my contribution tonight is that yes, I, I like the idea, and I'm sure that if it comes about, it, it can it can do great for for for, for uh, the people of Barbados. And then you wouldn't hear at the you wouldn't hear. Like what people say, oh, he's the constituency representative, but we don't see, <laughs> we can't get that done, you know. So the people who will be responsible for getting things done are the people who are involved and who runs the, the who would run that committee or whatever it is called. Yeah. So congratulations to you all. I will be looking forward to be making my contribution to the dialogue as it goes on. Um, and I wish the country all the best of success. And I'm here. I'm here. I've been in the wrong organization for years. <laughs> so I still know a little bit about them. Yeah. So being that as it may, I think that you're on good ground and keep the good work up. Thank you, Wesley. And it's good seeing you after all these years. Yes, 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 Ralph. Ralph, before before you go on, though, let me, let me, um, I want to respond. I want to ask first, Mr. Granham, a question, though. How did you know, Mr. Granham? About tonight's engagement, how were you able to? It came from the it came from the the embassy. It came from the embassy in Washington, Washington right? right. Yes, now, in Washington. That's how we know about. Now, it. just let me say, um, when when I arrived in this job in 2018, in, in the end of 2018, November 2018 to be exact, uh, one of the things that we hurriedly sought to do 
was to create more diaspora involvement. Mm -hmm. What we have done is we've been able to create a database of Barbadians living in the US of A. We yes. have got almost 5,000 active members of our diaspora database that we communicate with. You are on that database and that's the reason you were able to get the information this evening. Now, now it's not perfect as I, I, Ralph has said, none of these systems are perfect, but we've been building out that database. And some, uh, um, some people are reluctant to even add their names to the database for whatever reasons, I don't know if you think you're the IRS or ARM or the IRS or whatever, but, but the ones that we do get, we communicate with, and that's why you're able to do this this evening. That's why some of the other people that are on here are on here this evening. On, the other, on, the, on another note though, we have an active honorary counsel in Atlanta, Mr. David Cutting, who in my opinion, does a very good job of looking out for Barbadians in that particular state and in being able to keep people closely associated with what we're doing. I know he communicates with me. And if you don't have Mr. Cutting's information, we will put it in the chat so that you will know how to communicate with Mr. Cutting from now on. Because I know, Mr. I know Mr. Cutting personally. Oh, oh, oh okay. Well then, I, I, because I hear you talking about honorary counsel. We do have an honorary counsel. Yes. Who I think performs a credible job in terms of what he does. Uh, excellent job. And I think it is important that we, that we, you know, we keep it, we keep, letting people know that we do have people who function. A number of our honorary councils, all of them for, in my opinion, function relatively well. And therefore I would, we will keep you updated on all the things that we're doing. It's not a perfect system yet, but we're getting there. And these engagements that we do on the first Thursday of every month at seven o'clock in the evening, there's some other means of communication that we have too that we're going to refine to keep you updated about what's happening in Barbados. So I, you stand by and thank you for joining us this evening. Well, thank you so much. Thank right. you for the invitation, I appreciate it. Right, there's Mr. Chetlin Rice. You have been waiting for a while. Go ahead, the floor is yours, sir. Hi, good night, everyone. Um, thanks Hello, for uh, convening this um, session. I have a comment and I have a query. So my query is um, when the assemblies are uh, officially set up. Yeah, and you're in Barbados? Yes, I'm here. Okay, I'm here. welcome, welcome. Yeah, thanks. So when the assemblies are officially set up and you, um, you host um, whatever form of communication, interaction town hall meeting or what not to actually gauge um, the, the pulse of the community. Say for example, on the shift away from 11 plus. Um, this information is, I would presume, correlated, um, submitted to, so I just want you to fill in the blanks for me in terms of the value chain. It, it's the, the information collected from the community is then correlated and could you run me through the process whereby um, the views of the at, the at the community level are actioned and not just contained in a document presented to a representative and what is the feedback mechanism? So after they sub after the, the populace submits their concerns, how do you, what mechanism you have that feeds back down to the community to let them know, well, we heard you and this is what we propose. What are your thoughts? Uh, Chetwin, did you mention the 11 plus? Yes, I just use that as an example to say oh, okay. a national topic, which everyone would want to have a say about. I like see. Using that as an example. The, 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 the people's assemblies will have specific mandates and those specific mandates will pertain to local issues. And we just mentioned a few, bus service, uh, garbage collection, wayside vending. Way vending, street lights, local infrastructure. Uh, the 11 plus would be a national issue which would be dealt with by central government. But of course, uh, Chetwin, I don't see anything wrong uh, with uh, the evolution of things in which the People's Assembly will attempt to, as was least suggested by way of private members acts, influence the central government. Because as you are aware, 
the survival of the House of Assembly is dependent on the will and the wishes and the opinions of people in the local communities. Uh, but I want to tell you that the mandate at the local level is fairly specific. But there's nothing wrong with having general discussion. And if things evolve in the way that Woodsley anticipates and in the way that you anticipate, perhaps in the fullness of time, people's assemblies will be attempting to influence central government in ways beyond the present mandate. To add to that, this document that we prepared it would be a living document because coming out of all of our consultation, we realized that what we initially suggested has evolved from what Correct. we would have first imagined. Yes. And we do not expect that what our final document mm -hmm. that is presented would forever and always be remain static. Correct. Mm -hmm. So we propose that every year we be doing an annual review and persons will be having input. And as we grow, we will be able to change that document to adjust to the different aspects that Barbados has grown and evolved into. And especially as we get into the nitty gritty of each parish, we are hoping that you would have addendums to the initial proposal so that if there's anything specific to say St. Lucie, that they will know this is how they would deal with it if there's something specific to St. Michael, because all the consultations we did, each parish had something different in terms of how they would expect their own assembly to be functioning and to work. And that is fair. What we proposed initially, yes, is a draft, but as we go about, what works for St. James may not work for St. Lucie, may not work for St. Michael. So we are hoping that persons would step up and say, this is how we expect our assembly to continue going forward. And if that is what the majority wants, that is what would be happening. But don't expect that this will be a document that is the end all, be all, never change. Okay. Thank you very much. Mr. Cutting, David Cutting, the Honorary Consul in Atlanta. You have the floor, sir. That's the man of the moment. Good, good evening, um, Mr. Thorne, Ms. Howell, Ambassador. Uh, uh, let, let, me, let me say that I completely agree that this People's Assembly is an excellent way of making sure that the communities across Barbados are properly represented. And I think they, they should be able to work very much in hand with their representative. Um, there, there are obviously needs in the community that are common and there are needs that are specific. And I think in both cases, this um, process of a local assembly will make sure that we get everybody on the same um, playing field in terms of the needs of the community. So I think I completely endorse the idea. Let, let me also say that as honorary council in Atlanta, historically we have relied on the Barbados Association, which is which for more than 30 years functioned until the last couple of years when it has seemed to have died a natural death. Um, that has been personally a disappointment to me because the existence of a local diaspora association is, is an excellent way for somebody in my role as honorary counsel with <laughs> limited resources is able to communicate and have access to the community. And those uh, in our community know that I have tried very, very hard to keep the association alive and to, and to reinvigorate interest in the idea of a community. So I hope that this People's Assembly in Barbados will be a catalyst for our diaspora here in Georgia to come back together. Mm -hmm. Because it's been very disappointing to me and to others that we have allowed the association to die. Um, but the association historically has been the, the vehicle that our local diaspora has been able to discuss issues and to collectively assist um, in, with, with items of need in Barbados. So let me say that our folks in Georgia know who I am. I'm accessible, available. My contact details are available to everyone. And I'm here to continue to be of assistance. I function as a liaison for the consulate in Miami. And 
and, and also, and, and also um, a liaison for the embassy in Washington. Um, we, we have used the association to dis disseminate information and we would like to continue to do that. Now that the association is, is not in existence, it is now harder to reach our diaspora. So we still continue to do our best to reach out. Um, as Mr. Granham knows, I have always been a supporter of our local association. And I continue to hope that the association will be reinvigorated and that we can continue to do the job that we've been doing. But I completely applaud the idea of um, the People's Assembly. And I think that we have to get our own act together here in Georgia and bring Barbadians back together. It, it has been very, very difficult to, to have a collective voice for Barbadians in Georgia because the association's existence hasn't been supported by enough people. So I look forward to that association coming back or some other form of association to represent our diaspora. But thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cutting. Uh, there is Dean, Ms. Dean, go right ahead. You are, you're on, you have the floor. Good evening, Ambassador and uh, Minister Thorne, Crystal. Good evening, Good evening everybody. Mm -hmm. I just have a couple of questions in terms of the structure. I okay. think it's where, great. Where, where are you speaking to us from, please? I'm speaking from Maryland, Silver Spring, Maryland. Oh, welcome. Thank you. I do have a couple of questions in terms of structure. Um, mm -hmm. And I wonder whether thought has been given to, as someone mentioned before, the bipartisanship of the makeup of the group or the council, if, if there is a, con if it's set up in the form of a council. Um, and whether that council will have autonomy, total economy, autonomy of their budget, whether that budget will then trickle down because very often we have in the councils, you can have certain people really getting more influence, having more influence in some of these small um, councils. So the structure I'm looking at and wondering about is whether this is a, a, a council that will be given a budget and that budget will then have with it some conditions so that the management of the budget, though autonomous, will ensure that certain things are looked after and, and that the trickle, the trickle down effect takes place. I also am interested in figuring out whether that budget will be based on size of population median income in that area. Um, again, because depending on where you are in Barbados, that could be an issue. My other concern is um, diaspora participation. I hear a lot about diaspora participation. And my understanding has been that it will work if diaspora is sending money. When the diaspora sends somebody or somebody comes from the diaspora to make a contribution in terms of expertise, that they're not necessarily readily accepted. And that is one of the turnoffs that I think has been a, a major issue in getting participation from the diaspora. So if you're talking about getting help from someone from the diaspora who is linked directly to that parish or to that town, and they know people in that city and that town so that they have a connection and people will think that they can trust them, they can work with them. I think that is important, but too often, and this is something I think I, I, from what I understand is across the Caribbean, and that is we want help from the diaspora, but when people come from the diaspora, the people at home are not prepared. And I think that if we're going to some way try to get help from the diaspora, it should be a two-way street. Very often people coming from the diaspora will prepare themselves 
and have an idea of what they're getting into, but people in the island are not prepared for what's coming. And I'd like to see a two-way street where people in these islands, in the government offices or wherever they are, are prepared and, and given uh, some help in changing their mindset about what these people are coming to do and why they're coming. And those are my comments, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Dean. Uh, you, you have raised an issue that uh, some of us may have been bashful about touching, uh, reluctant to touch it, the, the, this, this issue of tensions between the diaspora and the local population. It's something I don't pretend to understand, but I know it has existed. Uh, you mentioned uh, mem uh, members of the diaspora visiting Barbados and having difficulty in government departments, for example. And I want to confess to you that there have been tensions between the diaspora and the local population when members of the diaspora come here. In fact, we've even had a, a problem with the language used to describe people who return. Uh, returning nationals have become something of a pejorative term in Barbados. And uh, I know that uh, these communities who have come home, they have found themselves in situations where they line, if you would appreciate the term, they, they, they go to the beach and they used to go to the beach and integrate with Barbadians who have lived here for all time. And those groups have now uh, bifurcated into two separate groups. And I don't, I don't understand why the tensions exist, but they exist. And that is something that we as a nation, and when I say nation, I'm not only speaking of Barbados physically, but the extended nation, the nation that extends into the diaspora, that is something that we must resolve. And I am wondering if the, 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 the embrace of, of the, the foreign, not foreign, the, the diaspora into the people's assemblies will ease those tensions because we need the expertise. As I said earlier, I go to the United States, I go to Britain, and I see examples of community councils or, or local councils that are functioning so well, that are keeping the communities clean, that are keeping them uh, well functioning, that has a bus service that is always on time. And, and those are standards that we need, uh, we, we, we need in Barbados. And we can only get that if we rely on the expertise of persons such as yourselves who live in these communities, whose lived experience is one of appreciating high standards and, and adhering to high standards on a day-to-day -day basis. So that's, that's, my, that's, my, that's my opinion on it, that we need, yes, the tensions exist, but we as a mature adult population need to resolve those tensions. They exist, I don't know why. Um, what I would add, because some of the persons I interact with that are living overseas that come back and give back to Barbados, they do share the same concerns that you have. But what I have found is because of your experience in living overseas and actually living and seeing how things can work and be better, mm -hmm. you have seen it. And then you are trying to share that experience with some person who does not have the same vision that you would have or the same eye opening experience to see how this can happen and how this can function. What they sometimes feel is, well, to use the beige of vernacular, you come here to you better than the rest of us <laughs> and that you know more than me. And then there's that pushback. And the reality is sometimes we are not always the best in being able to share the expertise we have without making persons feel less than. And Bajans are very proud people, as you will know. <laughs> they never want to feel as though they're less than or that they're not on an equal playing field with some person else, but sometimes it does take some humility on our part to admit that some person knows more than we do and can help us to get to where they are. So I'm hoping that both parties can meet in the middle. And as Ralph said, that the people's assemblies, because you'll be interacting with persons from your community where you grew up, these people should know you hopefully, that they would more readily embrace what you have and be willing to put it into play because I know she, man, I know he. So man, listen to he, he's a good person. They could vouch for he, whatever the case may be. And we get it going there and we see it then evolve. But change sometimes happens in small steps. We sometimes want to just see things magically 
work themselves out, but hopefully this is one of those baby steps that gets us to mend some of those relationships that have broken between the diaspora and those of us that are, have been living here all our lives. And May I have really one small um, follow-up question, and that mm -hmm. is whether the National Transformation Initiative might be an avenue to um, train or help change the mindset of uh, those in the in in Barbados who are the recipients of this assistance over time. You you stopped there for a bit and. Uh... Look, you would have noticed I, I, I missed some of that, Darius, but I wanted to say to you that mine was a Freudian slip, even in describing uh, people who come out of the diaspora into Barbados as foreigners, that slipped from my mouth and I want to suggest to you it's, it's, it's Freudian. It is something, it's something we have to unlearn. We have, we have to go through the process of, of, of relearning that our people who come back to Barbados are not foreigners and that is a part of the problem. Uh, on the question of bipartisanship, there is, uh, we, we don't even want to use the word partisanship, whether bi or multi, uh, because Crystal next to me wouldn't mind if I say that she doesn't belong to a party. I don't think you're a member of a party, Crystal. Yes. And you better believe it, Darius. I suspect the majority of people, well, not suspect, I know, Noel, please allow me to say this, that the majority of people in Barbados are not members of a political party. And that is why we want to keep the system pure. Uh, we don't want to establish a people's assembly that has 10 Bs and 10 Ds. Uh, we want those people there to come in their own right with their own merit as people proven uh, in, in community work. Well, and, um, and Crystal, yes, and Darius, thanks for your input. Let me just say that we, we usually when we schedule these these engagements, we schedule them for our for 90 minutes. And we've exceeded our 90 minutes. I mean, when you're having fun, time goes really quickly. <laughs> uh, but let me, but before we wrap up this session, the number of things that we need to get clear. Um, it is my belief that Ralph, and we've spoken about this earlier, that this cannot be covered in just any one session. And I think there's a lot more to discuss in terms of the framework of the constituency councils the people's assemblies, whatever you call them, the, the, the new governance uh, structures in Barbados. I have a lot of questions myself. There are a mm -hmm. number of other people here who I'm sure have been listening and will have their questions. Uh, the structure of these councils or these people's assemblies is, is going to weigh heavily on people's minds. What exactly, how are we gonna put this together? You've outlined a basic framework, but people are concerned about issues like budgets, for example. Um, mm -hmm. Maureen Holder asked a very good question, which I thought Crystal did a, an excellent job on answering. You know, I mean, are we, do, do we allocate funds and do we distribute them equally? Because there are specific issues that are going to be for one council that may not pertain to another. And therefore, are we doing this on the basis of, of um, population size? Are we doing this? Permit me to uh, interrupt you, Noel, for one second. Sure. Uh, the, the funding would be for the administration so that it is equal. Every people's assembly will have the same number of admin, of, of assembly men and women. Okay, no, 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 Paul. It, no, it is not for work to be done in a, in, a, in an area. Yeah, but, but, but administration of that assembly. So no, 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 no. That, that that that's not what I, I understand what you're saying in that regard. Okay. But I'm saying in in regard. For, uh, let's choose another uh, issue again of the street light issue that we spoke about. We talk about the street light issue. And you're saying mm -hmm. that uh, I know this is not written down in concrete anywhere that mm -hmm. the, the council has the ability to requisition the Ministry of Public Works for the installation Correct. of that particular thing. No, I'm saying the Minister the of Public Works- falls on the MPW, the cost falls right, on right, the right, 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 right. So he or she petitions, what makes my street light in, in Bushaw Yard got more important than your street light in, in Pycornis in Lucy is what, I, what we're interested in. And people want to know how this thing is going to function because you don't want to create another layer of bureaucracy within your system that bottlenecks mm -hmm. you in the same way in which the older system has. And therefore, you, we, we, we starting now, this is where we can now get down into the weeds mm -hmm. and get more mm -hmm. granular about what, we, what we're seeking to discuss. That's one yeah. issue. The issue is, even on the issue of the distribution, like the three councils in Christchurch and the three in St. Michael, 
When you think mm -hmm. about population distribution in those two parishes, we, 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 I, I think we might still be up against the wall because the two in, uh, two in Saint, we got two in Saint Philip. Is that's what it is? Yes. Yeah. Right, right, right. I say, I, I, I thinking with the population movement in Saint Philip and why we got under under our parliament, why we have those three constituencies in Saint Philip is because of the movement of people out of these out of the urban areas into these rural parishes and the suburban areas you know you know exactly what i'm saying i don't yeah. know that two in st michael can fit the bell yeah. that's what i'm saying three three because of the population in st michael and christ church i don't even know three can fit the bell, but i'm not getting into that i'm saying that's something you can got to sort out because what mm -hmm. you don't want is for one constituency council to have to be dealing or one people's assembly to be dealing with 20,000 and another one to be dealing with only 5,000. That's what we don't want. And mm -hmm. therefore, mm -hmm. there's some refining mm -hmm. that has to be done in that regard. The other thing I want to know is this. I'm the Minister of Public Works. And, and, and um, we do create, because keeping partisan politics out of this is not going to be that easy. But I, I understand, and you said that at the beginning, but check this out. I am, when we do have an opposition in the future, which, which I, <laughs> I was once told in politics that the one thing that happens is the opposition always becomes the government sooner or later. <laughs> but, but, but if we do have an opposition, uh, get back to having an opposition in our parliament. Uh, I am the minister of public works. Uh, I am from the B's and John Brown is from the D's and the constituency council or the, in that constituency, he wants the street light, but I am the minister of public works now I am the Minister of Public Works. So, mm -hmm. but I am a B in that constituency. The D is representing the other, constitu the other constituency. How am I going to be as willing and as open to deal with those issues? You had better be. Well, you okay, better right, be. Right, right, right. Saying, right, that's because the your, your party will have a representative in that parish. Uh, agreed, no, no, no. But we try to keep this as nonpartisan as we can in the actual constituency council, in the actual people assembly. Mm -hmm. And then there's the other issue of Am I, am I as a, I'm a minister, I'm an MP, you've, you've introduced another layer under me between me and the people. Now I'm asking, I'm still dependent on those people for my votes and for, for me to, be get, to get reelected. Mm -hmm. um, uh, am I going to see as readily my authority to control the issue of the street light or the piece of tar or the piece of asphalt? Am I going to see that as readily to a constituency council when I know that them people, I need them people. The operative word, the, the operative word ambassador is control. And that, mm -hmm. that is something that is something in democracy that you must try to. Try yeah, to but no, I, I, I know the devil don't need, I, I, I may be playing the devil's advocate. control is not to control. Yeah, I may, I may be playing devil's advocate, but my authority as well. I, I'm saying, I'm a, the devil don't need right. advocates. Not over street like no, else. not no, over but you, but you see, but you see, Ralph, you may be open-minded and you may be, and you may be, um, pretty objective in this regard. Change, I'm saying, change, change. Right, I'm saying that's that's what, we, we're changing paradigm. Yeah, yeah, but we are trying to paint, but, but we want to paint a picture. We want to paint a good picture. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, but let me say, but, but politicians are out looking for votes, you know? Let me see this go. Not over a street like Noel. Not no, you, 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 might, not over road, road. you, might, you might be surprised. You, you might be surprised. But, that's not the, but that's not even the issue. The issue is, I just use the street like as the example. But you know in Trinidad and Tobago, for example, where there's local government, you know there's a minister of local government. Yes. You know, a minister, yes. sit, a man is sitting in the House of Assembly and then he becomes the minister for local government. Yes. So he has the budget for local government. Now we don't envision, we're not envisioning um, a centralization of the local government councils under one banner or under yes, one I person agree. or under one entity, are we? Are we Considering and that the government, con the, gov the central government controls the local government in yeah. Trinidad. But you right, were saying that is why they use local elections as, as a referendum on the popularity of the government, and that's what we're trying to avoid. Agreed. So we don't. So what? So, system. so you say you're putting this to the clerk of what you say the clerk of, clerk of parliament, and the clerk of parliament will fund the administration of each people's assembly. Right. But the work that is to be done in the constituency or the, 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 the area of the People's Assembly is still done by central government, is still costed and budgeted by central government. Okay, but, but right, so therefore, these, and they also have the leeway to raise funds on their own or raise resources on their own if they so desire. Yes, yes, that, we, right, right. we have discussed so, that. And, and yeah, the allocation right. of these funds is going to, the allocation of these resources, 
as it relates to the infrastructure and whatever is, is envisioned to be equal at first, but then obviously on specific issues, then we might over time be able to, to kind of rejig that. That's what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 but, but I mean, there's a lot to be discussed. But there's I want, a lot to be discussed. I want, to, I want to, before I wrap up, though, um, Ralph and, and everyone else here, yeah, and sorry, and Crystal, the just to um, tell folks who had mentioned and spoken about before, we do these, in, these engagements with the diaspora the first Thursday in every month at 7 p.m. We've had a number of these engagements thus far. And I want to, um, this is a response to what Darius spoke about and giving back to Barbados for Barbadians. We have, we, we have had constituency engagements, sorry, um, diaspora engagements in education, in health, in agriculture, particularly medicinal marijuana, um, on the Republic and the creation of Republic. We had one on the charter. We had a prime ministerial town hall leading up to the leading up to the um, to independence. Uh, what we try to do is we try to bring our diaspora together to get them to input into into Barbados's direction, social and economic direction and development. Um, only last evening, last night, we had we have put together a, a council which has ten members from the diaspora. It has five members in Barbados under the Ministry of Education. And what has been done is the minister was there herself, her permanent secretary was there, the chief to, uh, education officer was there. And we engaged, and, and um, curriculum reform expert, and we engaged with them and a number of Barbadians here on the direction that we could put, we call it a cross border committee. And what we are doing is they've chosen specific areas of education and development in which the diaspora is actually inputting into. And these 10 members of the diaspora came to the first education meeting. Out of that has flowed this cross border committee, which is now helping Barbados. And, and, and the, the ministry was very open to them contributing. And up to now, and we, we are, we've set up the projects, we've set up the frequency of meetings, all of that is happening. And we're gonna do the same in health, we're doing the same in agriculture. We now come to the point where the town, where we, we've reached the issue now of the people's assemblies or, or, or new local governments. Uh, what is gonna happen, this is only the first engagement. But what we'd like to see is create a, a real avenue for communication between the two groupings. Uh, I know that that that, that and there is raised the issue of whether or not people are really you know, you don't really want to accept, you know, then come for over in a way and then it's Beijing Yankees and I think they know everything and all that. Oh, I've, I've, I've gone through all this already. I studied in the United States and went back to Barbados to live. So I know the whole, I want the whole, the whole gamut. But I am pleased at what we've been achieving thus far. I want to engage you, Ralph, yeah. on further. And I know that David Commission really wanted to be a part of this this evening. And I really want to. Three of us will, will return. Right. I really want to apologize for David because he had a mix up with his travel arrangements he's and he's on a plane right now to Africa <laughs> under the prime minister. So he really couldn't participate, but he was like chomping at the bit to be a part of this. And I want to uh, enlist you in and, 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 um, and Crystal and everyone here that we continue this conversation on this particular aspect, that we oh. refine your thoughts, get yeah. together. So by the end of the month, before the end of March, I'd like to meet again on this particular issue because come, it, come April, the first week in April, we're bringing another of these conversations, another of these engagements to the diaspora. This one will be big because this one is one that is going to involve all of the diaspora. We want to find a way to, make, to get the diaspora to work on our behalf and to reward them for having worked on our behalf in a particular area of our development. I, we, we believe that if we, if we enlist Barbadians living in the exterior, to be part and parcel of this particular development action and that we can literally show, give you a reward, some commendation, some, <laughs> some commission upon being able to see Barbados move forward in that regard, that a lot of people are going to participate and a lot of people are going to want to be and the results are going to be shown. Measurable, serious areas of our development that we can actually look at the end of the month and see, you know, we've done this and this and the economy has grown or whatever it is has grown, things that can be measured, and we're going to be doing that. So I want, um, by way of, um, I didn't want to cut anybody short, 
But you know, we at the end of the day, it's almost ten o'clock in Barbados. It's almost nine o'clock. <laughs> mm -hmm. This thing went four. This thing went long real fast. But obviously, you look at it, you watch. Yeah. You're yeah. right. You know what? This has been very, very engaging, and I really want to thank you, folks, all of you, for participating this evening. I guarantee you that we're going to come back to you before the end of the month. You've got to make yourself available, Ralph and Crystal, yeah. and David okay. Kamishong is going to want to be a part of it. I really want to get you all back before the end of the month because, as I said, April will be coming with something new. I thank, want to thank every participant this evening for your spirited interest in what we have been doing and your input. I also want to thank the embassy staff because this is beyond their hours of work. For some of them, it may be beyond their bedtime. <laughs> I really want to thank them for being always there. Uh, Mandisa, Michelle, and Tricia, I don't know if there's anybody else. I know that Marvin Brathwaite in, um, in Miami is on as well. I want to thank Mr. Cutting for your contribution. He's one of our honorary consuls. I want to also thank Minister Kurt Humphrey. Yeah. And uh, I want to thank um, the Parliamentary Secretary, Corey Lane, for being a part of this gathering this evening. Uh, he's in the right lane. He's always been in the right lane. <laughs> As Ambassador. Oh, yes, ma'am. Crystal Bell. No, 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 I came on late. Don't worry about me. <laughs> Sorry, good night, all. <laughs> no, 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 no. And that's not, no, I'm just letting you know, just to let everyone know that Tracy had put in the chat. Um, Peter Boyce had asked about receiving a copy of the report. Yes. And I see a few people have been responding for, for all the others who haven't. They can just drop their emails either in the chat or um, at washington.foreign.gov.bb to get a copy of tonight's report. Thank thanks, you. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Folks, I, I didn't need to do, I didn't see Chris Bell when we first started. That was the reason I why. was late. No, no, I, I had, an, I had, a, I had a, um, another engagement, remember? Oh, okay, that, okay. But this is Chris Bell Reese. Um, this is the um, Deputy Chief of Mission in the Barbados Embassy in Washington, who does a very able, very able woman and does a very good job. So thanks, Chris Bell, um, for being here. There's a name that just came up in the chat, which is Dr. Errol Bolden. Let me just say to you, Dr. Errol Bolden is one of those people who's, who's part of the, of the education committee from here, the diaspora committee here that is working with the committee with the Ministry of Education in Barbados to be able to create new, a new curriculum. We're using a lot of them. There was one lady on last night who works for NASA. And she, you know, the, 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 these, are, these are things that we're focusing on because Barbadian children have got to dream as well. Um, nobody ever told me when I was going to school I could work for NASA. She said so last night. She said nobody ever told me when I was going to school in Barbados I would end up working for NASA. And I mean these are these are uh, aerospace engineers. You can imagine a Bayesian woman who's an aerospace engineer, you know, uh, working at NASA. And I'm saying that these are the kind of we need to hold you all up as examples to our population, yeah. Yeah. to our younger people. There are Barbadians overseas who are doing very very well. Um, and, and we want to hold them up. And then there are also they're, they're people in so many different areas that are doing so so great for Barbados and doing great things. And we want to make them known to Barbadian people, but we also want to get to borrow a little bit of their great matter and their experience and their skills to be able to push us ahead. So Ambassador, Lynch, yes, Ambassador Lynch. Yes, yeah, this is, yeah, this is Judy Lane Banks here in Louisville, Kentucky. How are you, Judy? How are you? I'm fine, thanks. I don't know if I know you. you I well, I know of you. Yes, I do. Yeah. But I I did not attend any of the other meetings. But I realize you have a committee on education. Yes. And I haven't heard anything about the arts. I mean, I'm a visual artist. Yeah. What about the visual art or the well, arts? Well, well, Judy, one of the things that we're doing is we are trying to get through um, all of these committees. We're trying to get through to make. Um, to make things work for everybody. So we, we, not that we have forgotten the arts, as a matter of fact, one of the committees, subcommittees that we talked about utilizing under the, um, under the banner of education and a subcommittee was a sports and cultural subcommittee, which the arts would easily fall under. But again, these things are new. This is a fledgling approach to how we deal with this. We've been working at this, but as I said, it's not easy. You know, COVID came and then, you know, appended everything. But apart from that, we have now gotten the structure. We're getting back to meeting with our diaspora on a regular basis. Every month we're doing it. We're going to keep you updated through an electronic newsletter, one of which went out last year, but we didn't get to complete the process. No, this is Judy who used to do those beautiful batty. 
Embargo. Yes, who, who taught your daughter, oh, uh, uh, Ernestine? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know who Julie Lennon is, of course. <laughs> right, right. But we, we getting back, Julie, we getting back there, don't worry. Okay. And I mean, I, I mean, there's a lot to be done, but I want to enlist you all in getting, in being a part of this new diaspora movement. You know, we got to, we got, all of us got to play our part, you know, get involved in what's happening for Barbados. But ladies and gentlemen, it's nine o'clock in the night, 8.58 here. And I really want to thank you all for participating. I want to thank the embassy staff for, for burning the midnight oil and always being with us and really being diligent at what they do. Um, and I want to thank you, particularly um, Ralph Thorne and Christopher Howell for oh, being a part of tonight's engagement. This has been very educational for all of us. And I promise you that we can get back before the end of the month. We will thank you. send out the flyer and everything. We'll do all the advertising. But thanks again. And have a good night, all of you. Thank have you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Good, good night. Recording stopped. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night.